Let's take you here now. The race towards the 55th National Conference of the ANC in December is fast gaining momentum. Many within the National Executive Committee have been raising their hands, showing interest to contest the top six leadership positions. One of them is ANC NEC member Pumulo Maswale. Let's cross now to our politics reporter, Abongile Dumago, who is standing by with Maswale in Asantan. Abongile, very good afternoon to you. Over to you. Certainly. Good afternoon, Unati. We are live from Johannesburg. This is where, of course, we are going to be in conversation with Pumulo Maswale, the former ANC chairperson in the Eastern Cape. He's also been the premier of that province. He's had a role to play as a treasurer general of the South African Communist Party. Now, he's currently the deputy minister of public enterprises and also an ANC NEC member. He's actually been uh, nominated to become the next secretary general of the ANC. He joins us now to talk us, to talk us through some of the things that he wishes to bring to the fore as the secretary general of the ANC. One of the reasons, Mr. Masole, good afternoon. Thank you so much for your time. Thank you. Thank you. Good afternoon. One of the reasons that were brought to the fore by the secretary of the ANC in Kwasi Natal, Begim Dolo, that they would like for you to stand in as the next uh, secretary general of the ANC was that you've done quite well uh, as the ANC provincial chairperson in the Eastern Cape. You've, did, you've done sub quite well as well as the premier, the SACP party also did come up quite strongly. Do you think those reasons are enough for you to stand? Well, uh, certainly yes, uh, they are. In fact, uh, it's but a tip of an iceberg. Uh, really, I've uh, served the movement in various capacities. Uh, actually, my baptism uh, within the broader fold of the mass democratic uh, movement was through the trade union movement, strangely in a quarter where such was uh, uh, not uh, permitted at the time. Uh, in the Transca, you'd remember you wouldn't really uh, have a union there, the laws didn't permit that. But we started organizing there. Of course, I spent uh, a good part of my youthful life uh, within the structures of uh, the youth, uh, South African Youth Co uh, Congress at the time. So you could say that I've lived through, uh, in my experience, uh, the movement in its entirety. Uh, so yes, uh, it would not be that uh, one uh, is wet in the ears insofar as uh, uh, understanding the, the role expected of him. And of course, uh, the, the, the role of being a Secretary General of the ANC, the biggest liberation movement in Africa, is no child's play. Uh, there's an issue of integrity within the ANC. There's an issue of the public image that continues to, to be dented and deteriorating as far as trust is concerned in the party. Now, as the Secretary General of the ANC, such an important position in the party, what are you bringing to the fore in as far as making sure that the integrity of the ANC is restored? That matter has got to be uh, dealt with continuously and forthrightly. Uh, we can ill afford uh, the image uh, of the organization uh, being uh, looked down upon uh, by actions of individuals. Uh, we've got to work even harder to ensure that the esteem of the movement uh, is uh, brought back. It becomes uh, uh, the pride of the nation, so to speak. Uh, so uh, to that extent, uh, we've got to continue with the efforts uh, to ensure that uh, in the way we conduct ourselves, in the way we engage with our communities, in the way we undertake our activities. We do so in ways that inspire confidence. Uh, we do so in ways uh, that can make people uh, find the joy in associating with the movement. Most of the time, the ANC is, is, is seen and viewed as the party that takes forever uh, to implement some of the policies that are discussed. I'm referring to the recent uh, 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 policy conference that took place in Nazareth. Uh, you came to the media and presented some of the policy, policies that are being proposed. The expectation is that those policies should be implemented, but the issue of implementation and time frames continues to be a, a challenge for the ANC. It, it does. It does. Uh, largely, we've tended to rely largely from those who operate within the arena uh, of uh, government. 
uh, to give expression to these ones who have uh, con translated these into the manifesto. It is the manifesto that uh, then uh, gets translated into, uh, in government, they would refer to a medium-term uh, strategic framework, a, a, a conversion of the, that which is in the manifesto into uh, key government programs, uh, so to speak. It is a fact that uh, there has been sluggishness, mm. highly unacceptable, uh, the translation of what is resolved to what gets done. I think it's a matter that uh, needs a continuous interface with so that there could be a way of creating a sense of alignment between uh, the policies uh, uh, translated into the government uh, plan of action and the implementation of that. The implementation of that relying on the ability to resource those uh, quite timelessly. Contrary to, to that, Mr. Maswale, we've seen uh, since the last conference in 2017 up until now, some of the resolutions taken uh, quite speedily implemented. I'm going to refer to the elephant in the room, if you like, the step aside resolution. It was quick to be implemented, but the issue of the Reserve Bank is still hanging in the balance. You guys tried uh, with the issue of land reform, but there were some challenges in as far as passing the, 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 the law is concerned in Parliament. So there seems to be a bit of uh, an imbalance. Some are clever than the others, if you like. Some are being prioritized more than the others. What's your take on, on, on in as far as that is concerned? Yes, you may say that it's a very fair criticism, uh, but again, in the theater of doing, uh, some things are fairly easier to do, others a lot more complex to do. Some rely, or you have to not only rely on your internal uh, uh, instruments, uh, internal apparatus to give effect to them, you also rely in some external agencies that you must uh, get them in alignment. Uh, yes, uh, it, it is a fair criticism though because some don't, there is not an account of very decisive strides made in them which could be a problem of on constant implementation and monitoring of implementation of resolutions. On the other, there would be those that look easier to do and they then get easily get, get done in a sense. So when you put all of them on balance, you would say there are those that though have been neglected in the way it appears. So with, with regards to, again, the step aside resolution, which we've seen really causing quite a, a stay in as far as the internal politics of the ANC are concerned, are you happy, satisfied, or you, you feel otherwise about how it's being implemented? We've seen Ace Mahashule now, he's a suspended secretary general, the very position that we're contesting for. So it means there is a, a gap as a result of that. We've seen other ANC members having to face the music, uh, if, if you like, when they're being fingered out on corrupt activities. Is it being implemented the right way fairly? I think we've got to subject it to further scrutiny mm -hmm. because in some instances we rely on decisions or actions that are outside of our control which may make us look to be opportunistic in actually uh, carrying out that is implementing this. Let me just make you an example. You've referred to uh, the matter to do with uh, 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 Comrade Ace Mahashole. Uh, in my view, uh, with all the goings on in the case, at least there should have been a period of reconsidering whether or not we still go along with the effective suspension as it is. Uh, I think uh, you might have cases running much, much longer. Uh, I think we've got for that reason. To, to come back and some of the cases run that much long only for the person to uh, to be cleared. We've had a similar case in Pumalanga where people were charged but uh, in no time uh, charges were withdrawn, the persons were cleared. So I think we need to revisit it such that the actions we take are in the purview where we have absolute control so that we can apply these evenly without there being an impression that there is selectiveness or there is 
targeting of some individuals. Where I think we need to really strengthen the, the resolve to make sure that uh, we keep our movement fairly free of people who have uh, burdens uh, that they have to their uh, uh, to themselves those should not be brought to the ANC uh, so so in, in a sense uh, uh, to, to try and ensure that the, we uphold the integrity of the organization we've got to continue with that path but we've got to revisit the steps we've taken we've rather been very clumsy in it uh, tripping and falling and uh, you have this set of rules now uh, and then you in no time you've got a new addition to such sets of rules I think let's put all of that uh, on, 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 on the table once again anyway it is something that should happen because all resolutions uh, in, taken by the previous conference are reported on on the next conference for uh, reappraisal strengthening or where they've become obsolete uh, simply uh, discarding those very quickly then, before we move uh, from the issue of step aside, your fellow ANEC member, uh, Mamulin Dwesisul, was speaking to my colleague uh, a couple of days ago, Mzwandi Lembeje, saying that she feels, again, the step aside issue is not being done correctly. Looking at the current president of the party, Cyril Ramaphosa, and the Palapala farm issue that is hanging over his head, Mamusisul believes that she should step aside. You've come out recently in the media as well, saying that maybe it's about time that Cyril Ramaphosa must vacate office. All right. I think these are different matters altogether. Uh, I can speak to uh, the issue of preference uh, to uh, the leadership uh, question going forward. I've been speaking to that. But let me just comment on this issue about... Uh, that's, it's for that reason that uh, I feel strongly that we've got to subject the step step aside uh, policy or uh, guidelines to give effect to that subject them to review once again scrutinize them such that you make them free of any suspicions but also strengthen them to the extent that they assist you achieving the objective the objective is to ensure that individuals do not burden the ANC with allegations that they have to themselves. Do I make myself yeah. clear? Yeah. 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 So, so, so in respect to the comment made by Comrade Sisolo, I, I think it could find, that concern should find expression within that review of what is obtaining in that. And I think I share the sentiment that there may be serious allegations that people have uh, to themselves. Uh, the measure that only if you are charged that uh, there must be then effected this, it is itself supposed to be reviewed, reconsidered, because anyway, there could well be many people here going with serious allegations to themselves, but simply because they have not been charged. It does not suggest that it is not harmful to the integrity of the organization. It would seem then, as we move on, that there is more uncertainty and there is more disagreement in as far as the step aside issue is concerned. Let's put it aside and now come back to your intentions of becoming the Secretary General of the ANC. The conference is coming. There's a lot of fellow NEC members. I can mention Manu Sikigaba, I can mention Figile Mbalula, who are putting their hands up to say that we want to take this position. Are they that much of a competition to you? Are you threatened? Are you worried? <laughs> I wouldn't say that. I wouldn't say that. In fact, I think uh, this time around we've set out to make sure that we, we really undermine the issue of slates uh, and, and, and that uh, let it be that uh, the conference delegates uh, uh, coming from their branch general meetings, they have expressed themselves what preferences they have. They'll have time to look amongst these names that are put forth to say who we think can do best in this position. And so they will decide through voting for that. So no one is a threat. 
uh, in fact, uh, if anything, it should be that we should all celebrate the fact that there are many um, names put forth uh, to be looked at. And after that, uh, uh, they all have to work for the ANC going forward. There shouldn't be any animosity, uh, enmity. Uh, it, shouldn't, it shouldn't arise uh, because we're all looking to strengthen the movement going forward. And certainly now, with regards to the fact that the ANC is a governing party in South Africa, at a national level at least, but uh, people continue to feel otherwise, and, and, and they are actually uh, aggrieved about the fact that things are not really going well, especially if you look at state-owned entities. Let's take, for example, uh, uh, ESCOM. Load shedding has been back to back for a couple of weeks now and people are continuing to be frustrated. You are the Deputy Minister of Public Enterprises in government. Have you done anything at all to ensure that South Africans are not subjected to what we see now, the load shedding? Well, I have been very cautious uh, where it comes to this matter. Uh, the other day we must talk about the architecture uh, of uh, uh, the state as we have. Mm -hmm. um, uh, you see, uh, in a ministry, uh, there is a minister, there is a deputy minister, there is a distribution of responsibilities among those people. So, uh, correctly speaking, in terms of the Public Finance Management Act, the Public Service Act, all delegations made and authority accompanying such delegations rest with the minister who is a member of cabinet. So, I, I tend then not to want to venture into an area where there is a principal. Uh, who should be speaking on that matter. As to the functions of the Deputy Minister is to provide support, and I do provide support for as long as it is welcomed. Has it been welcomed? Yes, 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 I would say so. And, and, so, and of course, one would wonder then, if it's true, the rumor that goes around that the Minister uh, of Public Enterprises in the name of Pravin Godan is an iron fist man. It's either his way or no way. Well, uh, there could be people who can uh, have that view. Uh, perhaps it's out of their experience, uh, having uh, met uh, with uh, uh, the minister in such terms. But I can say that uh, from where I stand, I have not really got to the point where I felt like that. Okay, looking at, the, at, at some of the other state-owned entities, uh, 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 Transnet, I remember just a few, uh, about a week ago, former President Tabombek going all out to say he believes that Transnet is in a bad state. He believes that things could be done the right way. You look at SAA, there's been a lot of turmoil going on at SAA and Tenel and many other state-owned entities, Mr. Maswale. Mr. Maswale. As an NEC member, as a deputy minister in the public enterprise, what's your overall view of what is happening in SOEs, including the SABC, and what do you think could be done? Well, uh, perhaps uh, the, the, it's a fact that there has been uh, uh, some disruptions in respect of uh, proper governance in these, uh, in the appointments uh, that have been made. Uh, we couldn't uh, all the time have appointed the most appropriate and fitting persons uh, for these. And uh, I think uh, the effort to correct that is in a way though slowly beginning to bear fruit. Uh, going forward, I think we should add to it a very strong consequence management that accompanies that so that uh, where there is an effort to improve, those who can't, they have no reason to continue being uh, in uh, such uh, places. Uh, it should be that uh, you justify being where you are by delivering uh, results. I think uh, we, we can do more by uh, just uh, being uh, a lot more aggressive where it comes to that. Just as a parting shot there, Mr. Maswale, ANC members will gather in Nazareth for the 55th National Conference. They'll elect the top six leadership and, of course, ANC members and policies will be discussed. Here's an opportunity I give you. What are you bringing again in convincing the fellow ANC members and South Africans that you are the best candidate to become the next Secretary General of the ANC? Well, firstly, uh, I've throughout my activism been a person with a, very, a listening ear. Uh, who is very firm when uh, it is time to act and I don't wait for others I do I act on myself and I lead the way uh, where things need to be done and given where we are we really need people with a very strong organizing ability so as to really bring together a variety of people into the program of the ANC and I think I'm up for it
well, we wait and see if we will also allow the media to be as accessible to us because we kind of sometimes struggle with the Secretariat of the ANC. Pumulo Masale, thank you so much for your time. Thank you, thank you very much. Thank you. Are you most welcome? There you go. Onati Pajashi, his name is Pumulo Masole. He's vowing for the position of the Secretary General of the ANC. Come the 55th National Conference, which is just shy over a month away, we will see if that will suffice. And of course, we will see if he will deliver in accordance to what he has promised ANC members and of course fellow South Africans in as far as this position is concerned. A powerful position, of course, in the ANC. We wait and see. It's back to you in studio. A powerful position and a very confident contender. Thank you so much there, Abongile Dumago, in conversation with the ANC Secretary General Contender, Pumulo Maswale. Now, of course, he is an ANC member, former Premier of the Eastern Cape. And, of course, you know that this comes uh, ahead of the party's 55th National Conference in uh, December.